after the seventh earthquake in two weeks has hit the same area in western North Carolina. We're finding out more now from an expert. Joining me to talk more about these quakes is Dr. Kevin Stewart, a professor at UNC Chapel Hill in the Department of Earth, Marine and Environmental Sciences. Dr. Stewart, thank you so much for your time with this. Now, I understand that all seven of these were within a mile of each other near Canton, North Carolina. The latest just happening this morning, Tuesday morning at a 2.5 magnitude. Is this uncommon for that area? Yes, it's uncommon to have uh, so many earthquakes in such a short period in Western North Carolina. We certainly have small earthquakes in our mountains, uh, but to have a, a little swarm like we're now having near Canton is somewhat unusual. It's not a major fault line, correct? So what's behind these earthquakes? That's correct. There is not a major fault line, certainly, that we know of. And the presence of earthquakes means that the Earth's crust is relieving stress in some way, so that there are probably at least some little faults below the surface that are slipping, that are creating these earthquakes. But in many cases, when we get swarms like this, we really don't know for sure what the root cause is. It's certainly possible that we're going to feel more of these sort of small magnitude two and magnitude three earthquakes in the area. Larger earthquakes are rare. These swarms can go on for weeks in some cases and then just stop you for no tonight with what the National Weather Service is calling a particularly dangerous situation across several states. We have multiple tornadoes on the ground already today. At least six tornadoes reported at this hour and the severe thunderstorm watches and warnings damaging winds into the night. And in the northeast, the storms blowing through affecting air travel and that worker hit by lightning. 30 million Americans across the south from Texas to Florida in the storm zone at this hour. This monster tornado spinning through Newton, Georgia. That's in the southwest part of the state, the area under a flood watch as well. Those fierce winds ripping apart these buildings in Abbeville, Alabama. The map tonight showing the severe threat as we come on right now. Winds in some places gusting up to 90 miles per hour. And here in the northeast, dark skies, fast moving storms and that lightning strike. A police officer saving the worker with CPR. ABC's chief meteorologist Ginger Z leading us off. She's in the storm zone. She's in Alabama tonight. Tonight, powerful storms cutting a path across the south. This twister tearing across the land, throwing debris in southwest Georgia. At least two supercells came with a particularly dangerous situation warning. Kids first. Kids go in the bathtub. You get on top of them and drag that mattress over you. I'm telling you, this is life-saving information right now. And you fall to Alabama, watch as this tornado crosses right over the road at lunchtime. Further south, high winds shredding these buildings in Abbeville. The storms part of a multi-day severe weather outbreak stretching from Texas all the way east to Florida. And powerful storms in the northeast nearly claiming a life in Woodbridge Township, New Jersey. A parks employee painting lines on the soccer field struck by lightning just after noon. Immediately ran up to him, checked for a pulse, realized he didn't have a pulse, and began CPR. That officer and first responders able to revive the worker, who is expected to be okay. That is encouraging news. Great work from our first responders. Let's get right to Ginger. Ginger, we weren't sure if we'd have you live tonight because the storms I know were just blowing through, so we're glad you and the team are, are safe and ready to go for us. So take us through the night ahead. What are you most concerned about? Yeah, we had to come under an awning here because there have been perpetual severe thunderstorm warnings after homes in this very town were damaged by a likely tornado. These warnings and watches go all the way back through Mississippi and beyond. These storms have been training and even stronger storms are right now in Montgomery headed right here. So David, that particularly dangerous situation, severe thunderstorm watch, which is in central Mississippi, that's until 8 p.m. But you see those tornado watches still in South Georgia over to even North Florida. This is a long night ahead especially when it comes to the three to five inches of rain that will fall really quickly. Tomorrow morning, we'll see it move into the panhandle. Mobile will be in the damaging wind threat. There's another threat that goes Garden City, Oklahoma City. This is super rare for this time of year in this part of the country for the subtropical jet stream to be this active. Underneath it, huge heat dome that has been prolonged and dangerous. It'll take heat indices in parts of Texas, David, up to 118 through the weekend. Those are incredible temperatures already this season. Ginger Z in the storm zone. We can hear the thunder off in the distance. Please stay safe, Ginger. Thank you. That is hell.
How about this tonight? A city in Nevada is dealing with an infestation that some are calling biblical. Millions of migrating Mormon crickets. They're covering homes and roads in the city of Elko. The flightless insects have been swarming there for nearly two weeks now. When we looked out here, it, the whole wall was just covered. That really, really, really freaked me out. You can see that they're moving and crawling and the whole road's crawling and it just makes your skin crawl. It's just so gross. In case you're wondering, Mormon cricket infestations happen frequently in Western North America, but are noticed most in high population areas. There's not much residents can do now, but wait for them to go away. Famine is report coming. from the United Nations says more than 258 million people faced food insecurity last year. That's a 34% increase from 2021. Yeah, staggering jump there. Now, while some of that increase may be attributed to the UN analyzing more nations, the Secretary General of the UN says, quote, we're moving in the wrong direction pointing to the fact that this is the fourth consecutive year that those rates have increased. Well, joining us now in Studio 57 is David Beasley. This is his first interview since recently stepping down as head of the United Nations World Food Program. And David, together with the agency, is also a recipient of the Nobel Prize. David, so great to have you here yeah. and for the work that you've, you've done. Um, I think a lot of people are surprised that after years uh, with this problem of food insecurity getting better, that it is doing so poorly now. Fill us in on what's going on. Well, here's what's really quite remarkable. When I took this role six years ago, reluctantly, because I didn't want to do it, but I got talked into it, and God knows it's the greatest job I've ever had in my life, including being governor. It's just saving lives of people is just a remarkable blessing. And so we were 80 million people marching to starvation then, 80 million, went to 135 because of man-made conflict and climate shocks. That was before COVID. COVID comes along, it goes from 135 to 250 million. That was before Ukraine. So this report doesn't really include wow. all the countries in the world. So the real number is 375 million people on planet Earth that are marching toward starvation. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna get worse in the next eight to 12 months. You will have starvation. You will have destabilization of nations and you will have mass migration. So this report to come out now is critical. The world needs to understand how fragile the planet, how the poorest of the poor around the world are really struggling right now. I mean, that's jarring, the fact yeah. that you were reluctant to take this job initially because it's so difficult, so thankless, um, and now things have become more challenging. And everything you've just spelled out, though, is connected from climate change, forcing people to have to migrate, which totally upends how they know how to get and obtain food. How in the world do we tackle all of those problems now in a way that feeds people, considering there's plenty of food here in the U.S. being wasted. Yeah, when I took this job and there was 80 million, I, I thought, wow, I'm going to be able, be able to put the World Food Program out of business. Mm -hmm. 80 million people out of a planet population at that time, 7.6 right. billion, now about 8 billion. And so I went to the United States government. We got the Republicans and the Democrats, while they fight on everything, they came together on food security. I called it the miracle on Pennsylvania Avenue and appropriated the funding. And the reason we didn't have mass migration, we didn't have destabilization of nations and didn't have uh, starvation and famine was because the United States, the taxpayers responded with their senators and congressmen. We got the money we needed. But right now we're in a crisis mode. And here's what's sad. If we don't get the money necessary, it's not just that people will die you will have mass migration and destabilization and the cost of that will be a thousand times more than going and we've done the studies we feed about 160 million people any given day week and month that we did in 2022 we know what happens it costs us for example 50 cents to feed a syrian in syria that syrian who doesn't want to leave home we study we do that we do it they don't want to leave home they don't have food they got to do what any mom and dad would do they end up in berlin 70 dollars a day from 50 cents. 50 cents to, to $70. $70. That's yeah. just on the humanitarian cost side. That doesn't even get into conflict, security, and all these other well, issues. You mentioned conflict, and Ukraine is one of the world's leading exporters of grain. How has that further complicated this problem of, of global hunger? So when the Ukraine war broke out, everybody, political leaders, were focused on the eastern front with the Ukraine-Russian invasion. I immediately went down to Odessa and said, look, you've got a nation 
that grows enough food to feed 400 million people on top of the COVID economic disruption of supply chain systems and everything else we were talking about. I said, you're going to have a global crisis on food security if you don't get this port open. So I tweeted to Putin. I said, you will bring famine to the rest of the world unless you open up these ports. We got the ports open, but still tremendous amount of devastation was done to their food production. So they've gone from the longest to the longest bread lines in the world from being the breadbasket of the world. And now fertilizer costs, fuel costs, agricultural production has just been devastated around the world. In, country, in continents like Africa, where 70 percent of the consumption of food in Africa is grown by local smallholder farmers, they can't afford fertilizer. They can't afford it. They can't afford the fuel. So the next eight to 12 months are going to be devastating. In Central South America, the number of people we're looking at migrating toward the United States now, our surveys show that five times the number of people are now talking about migrating because they don't have food security. It's all connected. Uh, David Beasley, is. thank you so much for joining us and for sounding that alarm and for the work that you no, do. Thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you.